You're watching Adorama TV. Hi everybody, welcome to Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, today we're going to talk about an iPad app that a lot of people have been waiting for. It's finally here. It's iPhoto for the iPad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a few pictures that I uh, shot with my camera, use the iPad camera connection kit to get these over to the iPad and show you how they come into iPhoto and all the things you can do with them. So let's get started right now. Well, let's start by talking about how we get photos into iPhoto. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that we have all imported photos, the last import, we have our camera roll and our photo stream, and it would appear that we can import things straight into iPhoto, but that's not the case. You'll first need to import those into your camera roll, and then iPhoto will update itself to show you this. So let me show you exactly what I mean. What I'll do here is I'm going to use the iPad camera connection kit and I'm going to just do a quick import of some photos that I took on one of my cameras here. So when I turn on my camera, you'll see here are all the photos that I took. And these are uh, pictures of Kelsey's dog who's hanging out at the studio. And what I can do here is import these. Now notice that it opened up the built-in photos app on iPad. And so that's where all the import stuff happens. And so I'm going to import all of them. And so it's just going to import everything into uh, our photo application. All right, well now the last photo is importing here. We've sped that up quite a bit in our editing and uh, everything is done and it's gonna ask me if I want to delete the photos on my camera and I'm actually going to keep those because I want to use those later. And so now I'm all done with my import. And so now you'll notice that I have photos and these are the photos that I just imported and look at that, I'm back in my photo application. So what I want to do is go to iPhoto. So I'll zip back over here to iPhoto and what needs to happen is this needs to update itself. So right now, when I go to the camera roll, you'll look that it says updating. It's not immediate. So what we may have to do is to close all this stuff out. And you'll see right here now, it's starting to show up in this last import. So there is a little bit of a delay there, but once you import everything, it starts to pop up. So here are my images that I just imported. And now I can start showing you all the cool things you can do in iPhoto. So I'll go back here to my albums. We have the last import, all the stuff that's imported. I have this little uh, book here called Puppies that I'll be talking about and some other things here. So let's just get an overview. So we have all of our albums. We have our photos which we can see those uh, in a thumbnail view here, which is really cool. We have events, and so we have a couple of those. So this one was shot today, so it shows up as its own event. And then we have these things called journals, which I'll explain how those work here in a second. So first, let's go back to our albums, and I'm going to go into this last import. And you'll see now I have these thumbnails on the left-hand side, and I'm going to unplug this uh, camera connection kit right now, so we don't need that anymore. But one of the things that's really cool that I can do is not only can I click on each of these individually to see what I'm getting here, but I can click on one and use another finger to click on another, and I can get two of those in there. I can click on one, click on another, I can double click on one, and I can get a whole range there. So there's all kinds of ways that you can zip back and forth between these photos. So I'm zipping back and forth here. And you can see that there's all kinds of really nice ways to see your photos. So I'm just going to double click on this. Now one of the things that I would say about this interface is the first time I went through it, I did find it really clunky and it was hard to sort of zip back and forth between only one photo and all of the photos and it seemed to act a little bit erratically. So uh, I hope that they make this a little bit easier to use in the future because uh, sometimes I got an image that was stuck behind another one and I couldn't get rid of it and I had to get out of the app altogether. So there are some glitches here, but for the most part, this works as advertised. So let's take a look at the editing features of iPhoto. So I'll go in here, I'm gonna get this picture that I sort of like, it's this one right here, this is Lady, this is our producer's dog. So we shot this outside. Now, one of the things that's really nice is finally, in on an iPad, in iPhoto, you can look at all the metadata in an application or in a photo. So I can go up here to this little I, and you'll see that it's got the camera name, has the date, the time, aperture, shutter speed, lens length, exposure compensation, your ISO value, if it's a JPEG image, the metering mode, all of that kind of stuff. And then there's this thing here called comments. And this is one of the things I really love. If you uh, share your files on Facebook or Flickr, now when you do that, when people uh, add comments, they'll show up right here with your images. And that is really neat, and I'll actually show you that. So let's go back here to the albums, and I've got my camera roll here. 
And this is an actual image that I shared. And notice that now there's this little one that pops up there. That's because somebody's made a comment of, this is my little dog Tosca. I posted this to Facebook and somebody uh, commented on it. So if I click on comments here, now I can see that people are commenting on that. So Lauren said, so sweet. And Kelsey said, how cute. And you know, there's other things there. So if I did the same thing with uh, Flickr, those would show up. So now you can sort of see what people are talking about um, specifically uh, as they pertain to your photos without having to go into Flickr or Facebook. And I really love that. Now, one thing I did notice is this picture is not only in my photo album under pictures, under my camera roll, but it's also in my puppies. Uh, little uh, photo album here. And so this one here, this is the same photo that I shared. Notice that it doesn't have any comment information because I shared it from my main uh, uh, pictures folder, not from my puppies folder. Even though it's the same image, you have to make sure that you uh, share from the right place or those comments won't sh uh, show up, which I don't like. I think if you share a photo and you have it organized in several different ways, the comments should show up everywhere. Uh, but that's just something if that happens to you, you now you know why. Okay, let's go back to this last import. Here's our picture that we sort of like. On the left-hand side here, I can shrink these uh, thumbnails. I can expand those so I have more or less. So that's pretty cool. Um, at all points, there's this little help menu. So I can click on that and you can see that there's tons of help that shows up. And if this isn't enough, you can always say get more help. And when you do that, you have this whole manual in here. And this is really nice because this has a lot of information. So one of the things you can do is use two fingers. And now you have this loop that you can zip around and sort of check focus and see how clear things are. You can rotate that to the right to zoom in, rotate it to the left to zoom out, and then click to make it go away. That's really neat. You can uh, expand that just by flicking with your fingers. Now notice this came in as a full size file. So even though I have this um, where I can zoom in and out, I can really see this at full resolution now to really check to see uh, the clarity of it and how things work. And I can actually see my reflection in that eye, which is really cool. Now there's some other things I can do here. Down on the bottom, we have some editing tools. And so the first thing I wanna do is add a caption. So I'll click add a caption. I've got an external keyboard here. And so I'm gonna say lady is so cute because lady is so cute. Now I've got my caption there. I can go in here, I can mark this with a little ribbon or I can flag this. So there's just some organizational tools at the bottom here, which I really like. I can go uh, next and previous at the bottom here. I can click this little gear and do all kinds of things here. So I can revert this. I can set this as a key photo to use uh, to copy things. I can copy my exposure and paste it. So you can take something you've done to one picture and apply that to others. And you can always revert to the original or reset your images using this little gear down here. And that's really interesting. So on the left hand side, we have this little, uh, these little tools right here. If I click on the first one, this is our crop and rotation tool. So you'll see that we have this uh, dial down here. So as I rotate that, I can go different degrees. If I have an image that's a little bit off um, level, I can use that to fix that. Um, there's this button right here, and I'll show you what that does. So if I click and hold, I can crop this, and then I can move the image inside that crop, which is really nice. But now I've messed up my aspect ratio. If I want to keep my aspect ratio the same, I can click on that, and now when I'm moving this, it will keep that aspect ratio the same. And if I want to reset that, I can say reset, crop, and straighten. Or if I know I want to print this at a specific aspect ratio, like five by seven or four by six, notice by clicking the gear here, I've got three by four, 16 by nine, I've got square, three by two. And so you can use these to, like if I have a five by seven, there I go. Now I know this is gonna print out as a five by seven. I can take this, I can move it around, which is really nice. So we've got the ability to do all kinds of cropping. If I want to, and I'm gonna reset that because I wanna show you the whole thing. If I wanna change my exposure, got this tool. Now what I can do is I can change my brightness by moving this. I can exchange, uh, change my contrast by moving these sliders, higher and lower contrast. I can set my black point, either lower or higher, and my white point, either lower or higher. So this is a really nice, easy to use tool. And as usual, I can reset things if I don't like those. Right here, I've got uh, a little palette for changing color. So I can change my saturation by moving this left or right. I can change my blues, my greens, or my uh, reds by just moving these so it doesn't adjust everything, just those. The other thing I can do is 
I can click and I can drag up or down. So that is a really nice way to change saturation. I can just move that up and down. And then if I want to, if I'm clicked on one of these color channels, so here I'm on blue, let's do green because there's lots of green here. I can change the saturation up or down or I can move the green left or right, which is really nice. And so that allows you to do that. The other thing I can do is change my white balance. By clicking here, I've got all these white balance settings or I can do a custom white balance. I just put this where things should be white. So right there on ladies fur. Or if I have a person, I can click this and I can set that to a skin tone. So if I had a person's skin tone, I could set that on that and that would set the skin tones just right. And then as usual, I can reset things. And so, and if you have a person, you really want to preserve those skin tones, you can turn that on and it really helps to make sure skin tones get all wacky. We also have some local adjustments that we can make. And these are brushes that you can paint on very specific areas. So you can repair, so that's sort of like a healing brush in Photoshop. If you've got a hair or something that you need to get rid of, we've got red eye to fix red eyes. We can do saturation and desaturation. You can lighten and darken, sharpen specific areas or soften specific areas. So let me show you one. I'm gonna use desaturate. And so what I can do now is there's this little uh, button right here that will detect edges. So if I want to make sure that I don't go outside of lady's ear there, I'm going to say, hey, make sure you don't go over that. And so I'm just going to start brushing this here. And notice that her ear now is becoming desaturated. And I'll just do maybe this side of her face where I'm just taking all the color out of that. And I can do that more and more. And the more I paint, the more desaturated it gets. Now I can't really see what I've done there. So I can go over here and I can say show strokes and it will show me where I painted on there. And uh, this is really nice because you can do all of these different adjustments to local areas in an image. And if I want to erase that stuff, I can just erase, uh, erase the desaturate strokes or if I've done other things, I can erase all of those. So you can either undo what you just did or all of them or you can just use this eraser tool to erase some of that. So it's a really nice uh, tool to use. Then we also have down here something that I really love, and these are effects. And so we have warming and cooling and duotones, black and white, aura, vintage, and artistic effects. So let's go with the vintage. So once I click on one of these swatches, notice I have all these different choices here. So I can click on that. There's a little button here to say use the vignette or don't use the vignette. So these are really, really quick ways to really change the uh, look of your photo, and I really like that. And so now we have all that stuff. If I want to compare that with the original image, I can click this little button up here, that's the original, get done, original, get done, which is really nice. And again, as I showed you before, here's all the metadata. So we have that, and so we can see exactly what we're doing. Now notice this has info and comments. Let me show you one other thing that I think is really, really nice here. Um, and also, once you're done with that, I'll click edit. So we're done editing. I can click share. I can share this now to a journal. I can send this to my camera roll or iTunes, all these different places. One of the things that's really cool is Beam. And so if I have another iOS device like an iPhone or another iPad, I can actually send this wirelessly with the Beam feature. And so it's really, really nice. Or I can create a slideshow, send this to my social media networks. A lot of stuff here in iTunes, I mean in uh, iPhoto that we can be using. So much stuff that we just don't have time to go through everything today. But let me show you one more thing. And it is called a journal. Um, but before that, I forgot to tell you this. In info, notice that uh, on this, so here we have dogs in our studio all the time. Here's our dog, Cody. He's such a cutie. If I choose info, notice now I have map. And so on that map, it has a pen of where this photo was taken. So if you have a device like an iPhone 4 or a camera that has GPS enabled, well, it will show up in your iPhoto application. So the other camera didn't. This one was shot with an iPhone, so it did have... A, uh, a GPS coordinate. So you can take images and you can put them in little albums like this one here is puppies because we have lots of little dogs that we love. So here we are on set playing around with puppies. You can take those, you can share those two slideshows, etc. So that's really nice. But let me show you one more thing that you can do and that is to create what is called a journal. So what I can do here, I'll show you what a journal looks like. So this is a journal. Uh, we just went out and had a lunch really fast. So it says lunch and here's pictures of the restaurant and where we were. And so that's what a journal looks like. But let me show you how to build one really quickly. So to start, what you need to do is to go into one of your albums. So I'm going to go into my puppies album. And what I'll do is I will click share. I'm going to choose journal. And it's going to say, do you want it, the one picture that's selected or all of them? I'll say all of them to a new journal. 
and the new journal name is going to be puppies because we love puppies and they're all different types of uh, things you can choose here so I'm going to choose border which is the second one and I'll click create journal and this is going to create a journal I'll want to see it and you can see now we have this little journal and what this allows you to do is now if I click on that it brings it up I can go back and forth which is sort of cool I can share this with people and I can also add a lot of things so let me click edit here when I click the plus sign I can add a header I can add text little notes so let me add a note here and I'll double tap that and then I'm going to say this is a note about puppies and so you can start it's a sort of a scrapbooking utility so I can go in here I can change how this works I can make this larger if I want I can hold this and move it around I can start making this look a little bit better I could add something maybe I want to know what the weather was that day there it is 62 degrees Fahrenheit um, I can delete things I can move this up or down I can really do some cool things I can even add things like here's a food thing double tap that and say puppies like eating which is sort of cool and now I'm done with that maybe I can take this hold it move it up here and you can see how this is a really scrapbooky kind of thing now when I'm done I can share this out as a slideshow I can share it on iCloud or throw it into iTunes and then my friends and family can see this and so it's sort of a nice thing that you can uh, throw out there so people can see either your kids or your puppies or your project or whatever you're shooting it's really nice well that is iPhoto you can see that it's got a lot of features a lot that we couldn't cover today but it is well worth the money this episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.